<laughs> Annoying. Anywho. Well, what up, everyone? Hi. It is us. It is uh the people. The peoples. It is Joy. And it is Rouge. Welcome to another episode of... What's the name of this? Uh, How did I get stuck with you? How did I get stuck with you? The number one podcast. We just got voted number one. Did you see us in the magazine, babe? babe. The number one podcast. And we on a bulletin board if you go down 99. No, I'm just playing. Oh, God. We're the number one podcast for stamp collecting. (laughs) No, we're not. The number one podcast. I can't. No. We're the number one podcast for stamp collecting. We just Mm. got voted number one. Okay. We was in Bloomberg. Okay. Not the magazine Bloomberg. Oh. It was a, it was something different. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> we going to the top. First class stamps. Do they got second class stamps? I don't know. You ain't never, you ain't never mailed the letter before? No, baby. No? No, I'm just kidding. Yes, I have. Did, yeah, it's, no. You can only get first class stamps from her. Mm, I don't know how that works. I get domestic stamps. You get domestic stamps. <laughs> Is that a domestic thing? mail? The domestic. I haven't mailed a letter. In I a only long ship time. domestically. I don't ship I internationally. Do you know how to format a letter? Like to write a letter, like on the uh, front of the yeah envelope. Or we'll go in the top right hand corner. The return address. No, because that goes in the top left hand corner. Oh, dun, oh dun, my dun, god! Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> you you know. inspired. No, you oh, know Jesus. that was a trick question. That don't even count. That's why y'all haven't got your W twos yet. <laughs> oh my god! Whatever. She out here at the post office and messing up people's envelopes. Anywho, left hand corner. You knew what I was talking about. I didn't because mm-hmm. you didn't know what I was talking about. Whatever. Gonna, what you want to talk about? Going to prosper. We are going to prosper. We is gonna prosper. We're gonna prosper. I'm turning around like my neck broke. Up. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all hear some buzzing in the background, it is the fan because it is hot. Is one a holiday gazillion a degrees. Veneer. It is hot as it's fuck. Hot. It make me think that I have not been forgiven for my sins. Baby, you still climbing out the pits of hell. Trust me, <laughs> <laughs> you still it's climbing. Crazy mm-hmm. here. I did not like it. And I think I'm I don't suffering. Like it. But let's let's get serious for a second. Okay. Before we get serious, though, make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe, make sure you share this podcast. What's the name of this podcast? How did I get stuck with you? How did I get stuck with you? Because mm-hmm. you get on my motherfucking nerve. You get on my last, last nerve. I don't even have a nerve left. I, all my, my whole nervous system is shut down because of you. Wow. <laughs> so now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm offended. I don't care. <laughs> Deal with it. But tonight... This evening, uh-huh. we're going to talk to y'all about something that's been heavy on my heart. Oh, hell. Something that's been heavy on my heart. Preach, preacher. So- <laughs> <laughs> We've listened to a lot something of Kurt Franklin about- lately. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We rode back all the way from the Bay Area listening to Kurt Franklin. It was a vibe. It was a vibe. It was a vibe. It was. I didn't know we could vibe to the gospel music, babe. You can. Don't let no, nobody- I'm talking about me and you. No, yes, yeah, what I'm saying. Oh, okay. You, that we you can vibe. Cause he always be like, I ain't listening to no gospel music. I'll be you ready need to. to. You need to be. You need to be delivered. That makes me really, you know, it. GP, are you with me? Mm. Just do something a little different. He feel different. like the Lord gonna strike him down. That's what it is. He, mm. Mm. It's called let a force for Mc, repent. Let, <laughs> let that Donnie McClurkin come on. I'm gonna fire that hoe up. Oh my. Can you say fire that hoe up after saying Donnie McClurkin? No. See, <laughs> another one way ticket to hell. <laughs> Just like that. The Lord know my heart. He don't. Anyways, <laughs> tonight we're going to talk about something that's been heavy on my heart. Mm-hmm. Something that is important. Mm-hmm. An adult topic. Okay. You might be dealing with it. You might be dealing with Each it. Y'all school. might be dealing with uh-huh. it. Oh, <sighs> yes. Pretty sure 98% of the United States. <laughs> yes. Damn near. Yes. <sighs> we're going to get into the subject of a, uh, excuse me. Can you not sip your... <laughs> wow. <laughs> he already you said it's hot as hell out here. I need some... You not finna... You is not... You is not finna sip... Let me get a sip of that. Mm. Let me get a sip of that orange mm. juice. Mm. Let me... I got a, I got a chemical... Let's see if she shared with me. Let's see. Ah. Ooh. Hell of it. That's a little spicy. Mm. Why McDonald's drinks all of them is spicy? I know they talk about the Sprite, but... Mm. It's more than just the Sprite. It's a lot of them drinks. I don't know. I don't eat McDonald's, but I will go get the soda from there. But anyways, okay, we're going to talk about blended families. Mm. We're going to talk about step parenting. Okay. We're going to talk about 
co-parenting. Okay. We're going to talk about different parenting styles in the two-parent household. Mm. We're going to talk about step-parent boundaries. Okay. Let's do it. And we're going to talk. We might get into a couple of baby mama, baby daddy relationships. We might get into the baby mama, daddy ship. What you think about that? We'll see. The response, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. It's a little too soon for that. Yeah. <laughs> so, what you think about blended families? There seems to be a lot of that going on in the world. It is. Um, I mean, I don't know. To me, blended families is not easy. And it, like, from what I've seen, because I, for one, damn, did I come from a blended family? Mm. not yes kind of because i do have two older brothers that are only half, half brothers but i grew up in a, in a household where my mom and dad were both present so i didn't have to deal with you know a merge if i should if i can say that um but i've seen other families that are blended and i i've always questioned like how does that work like how do you treat the other kids like what do you guys do you know like who does what and right i don't know I'm scary. I, I'm as lucky as you because I have both parents in the household and they stay together, mm-hmm. which, by the way, does not always mean that you are going to have a functioning household. Agreed. Two parents that stay together in the same household does not always equal a beautiful childhood. It's a lot of kids that wish their parents had broke their fuck up. Exactly. And that's <laughs> so. why I don't believe in doing it for the kids because at the same time, you are still an individual and you still deserve your own happiness and peace of mind. Right. So if you're doing it just for the kids, you basically just... You're doing yourself a disservice. You're probably yeah. doing the kids a disservice too. Exactly, because they're gonna see that you guys are unhappy. Like, and that's what that's what you wanna your kids are gonna learn from you. They're gonna soak up everything from you as a household. Mm-hmm. And if you're showing them, oh, just stick with it for the kids, or you know, I'm just gonna be unhappy to make you happy, that's how they're gonna take it in life and be like, Well, my parents are together, so I guess I'll stick by your ugly ass side. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't right. want that to happen. And like you know, that's negative impact. They had a lot of that. When you see those memes and things like that where people be like, I wonder well, how come relationships not lasting as long as grandma and grandpa's back in the day. Yeah. Me and my mama had a conversation about like, because she seemed like the older family, like in her generation and stuff like that, like the older uncles, her uh, uncles and uh, great uncles and things like that. And, you know, it got really, really, really ghetto in them backwoods. Let me tell you something yeah. right now. Don't let that just because your grandma was at... Uh, Ebenezer First Baptist Church and she was uh, part of the choir and she helped out with the kids mm. basketball teams Mm. and all that shit that don't mean that she wasn't out there in them streets yeah for real same thing with grandpappy Mm -hmm. just because he did all that just because he know how to work on people cars don't don't mean that he was not out there with a whole nother family no for real It it gets real ghetto and you know when you find that type of stuff out at the funeral no, for real. <laughs> and they don't tell you about all the cra- other crazy stuff like incest. You incest, know what I'm saying? They don't tell you violence. anything about that because we don't we don't want to teach that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a bad like we're we're taught that it's a bad thing to do. So it's like you really don't learn that stuff until funerals, until right. you're old enough to really start gathering the information and putting two and two together. And you be like, what? You know what I'm saying? It's a very scary feeling, but that's the reality of it. I mean, I have a uh, my family. They go way. There's some family members that just go way, way back in the day and they, mm-hmm. you know, put that family tree together and stuff. And baby, when they told me out my like the chain of my grandmother had twenty three siblings. Like my grandmother had like twenty three siblings or something like that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how? <laughs> who who did all that? You know it what I'm saying? Like, crazy it was back in the day. It was crazy. It was but, getting crazy. Thirteen, I think I think my grandpa had thirteen brothers and sisters. See. It's crazy out And then there. you start thinking, like, what well, did they all grow up together? Were they different households? Like, what was the dynamic? Ooh, we don't let know. Let me tell you about this, too. I heard my mom tells me stories about, like, the older generation, how, like, some, like, all the cousins, like, some of the cousins end up living with, like, the grandma and the parents never came and then they moved to, like, all whole other states and stayed there and mm-hmm. they, like, never seen their parents and stuff like that. Like, it was really ghetto back in yeah. the day. Yeah. You got sisters really taking ghetto. care of their sisters' kids and, Ooh, that, you know, having them at young it. ages. Like, that stuff is real. You know what this generation don't get enough credit for? Finding out the truth. <laughs> that, too. <laughs> but walking the fuck away. Oh, man. Tell me about it. Walking the fuck away and looking out for your own happiness. Right. We don't do that. Well, we just going to stay together because, you know, I don't want everybody knowing that I got a divorce and I don't want everybody knowing... 
we getting the fuck up out of there. Exactly. You got about one and a half time. You got exactly. a half a time. A half a time. To stop to to treat me some type of way. No. And I'm not. streets. Shut up. Here I am. Shut up. I'm just saying. Shut up. I'm just okay. Shut up. I didn't. I didn't. I spunted the block a couple Shut times. Shut up. <laughs> okay. You're right. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying though. I mean, this we do have a spin in the block generation as well. We but do. it is not as frowned upon as it was back in the day. And I think it takes a lot of courage to leave the family that you had set out to have for your own happiness. Not cheating and shit. Mm-hmm. But uh, just like, you know, I got to look out for my own happiness. This is not working. We got to go our separate ways type shit. Right. And it's it's risky and it's hard. It's difficult to start blended families. But we are seeing a lot more blended families. We are seeing more men step up to the plate to raise yeah. Other people's kids. Yeah, not like you, you like niggas. Like you said, though, because. <laughs> wait a, wait a, not you niggas. Which camera we at? Not you <laughs> niggas that abandon y'all biological kids and then go take care of somebody, somebody else's kids. That is crazy. Why are you Wicked. doing that? Why Unheard are you doing of. that, Harold? Yeah. Devonicus? <laughs> Why are you doing that? Quiet. That is crazy. Oh that is absurd. God. I'm abandoning everybody. If I'm not taking care of one, I got four kids. Let me tell you, if I don't take care of one of them, I'm not taking care of all of them. Figure it out, mm-hmm. little niggas. Right. If I'm going to do something. But I'm not about to go mess with another girl with a kid and go take care of her nappy head ass kid. Right. My baby here not nappy. It's a little. It's no, a, no, no, it's not. It's a little coarse. My baby stay fresh it's to a little death. Co- it's a little coarse. Uh, no. <laughs> he is fresh to death. Okay. It's the microphone, you see this? Mm-hmm. It's a like that. It's, it's symmetrical. He just mad because he got to shave. He got to cut his own <laughs> kids here and he just put a patch First of on all, his kids' head. It was, it's bonding. Mm. We're bonding. Mm-hmm. So... It's like when you cut your kids' hair, you you just sit down. I think while you talk. did that, I think you messed your son's hair up because your barber messed your mustache up, and you just needed some type of revenge, but you couldn't go <laughs> back. You know what I'm saying? So you just messed up your kids. Listen, I forgot that I took the See guard off. See how trauma passes down? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I took the guard off. It was so <laughs> funny, though, because we sit Stay there, guarded. Stay guarded. <laughs> I thought I had the guard on, mm-hmm. and um, he let his guard down for you. I let my, <laughs> <laughs> and now that guard is back up, and it's never coming back down. <laughs> the trust is broken. It's gone. He said I can never cut his hair again. There, there you go. And there that was our go. bonding I don't moment. blame him. I enjoyed those moments of cutting my son's hair. You get to talk to him about life. That growing up, that young man. You get to talk to him about manly things. Well, I guess you got to start painting with him now. I don't know. I don't mind Figure doing out that. something else. But I just, I feel like the relationship between, because you already have a relationship with your barber as men. Mm-hmm. So if I'm, if I'm the, if I, if they get to have that relationship with their dad instead of a outside source, you know, it's a special well, moment. You need to go get your barber license and know I what am. the hell you doing. I know, I know what I'm doing. You don't. I did. Keyword did. <laughs> Can we get back but to what we were still, talking uh-huh, about? Uh huh. Go ahead, because. These lies is just rolling. Because <laughs> why is it like this? Objection, Your Honor. Mm-hmm. Relevance. Oh, okay. This has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Sure, babe. So anyways, what was we talking about? We were talking about niggas that don't... Oh, we, we talking, talking about, about your blended hair. families. Yeah, uh-huh. No, he's talking about blended families. Yeah. So I think that this generation is a lot braver than the generations before us because we're not afraid to go on and do our own thing. And it's risky. You take a lot of risk blending a family because there's so many different var- variables that come into thing, different parent styles, people's crazy, baby mama, baby daddy or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's a lot. I just, I commend our generation for, like you said, being brave, um, not sweeping stuff under the rug in a right. negative way, like the generation above us did. Because if you touch just, them kids, they telling the kids is telling, and so is everybody else. Exactly. But we are doing so much better, even through the trauma, whatever you've seen, whether you had a blended family, you have both parents in the house. Mm-hmm. Regardless, we have seen a lot. I'm sure a lot of people, you know, our generation, like, depression is real. Even now, in the generation below us, it's, depression is heavy. It's real heavy. So I feel like us as a generation, we're doing well, and we just need to, like, hold our, hold our babies. Man. Like, we, you know what I'm saying? We got to be there. We got to show them. 
what what is love? You know what I'm saying? Like what love really is. Don't sit there and baby it or, you know what I'm saying, sugarcoat things because mm-hmm. it's not going to do them any justice and you are going to be the one to blame. So when they come to you and they be like, well, you and mom did this or you and da da did this. I seen this. Well, you said it was okay. I saw you do it, so I thought it was okay. Yeah, you got to be you accountable. You don't want that because gotta... then it's going to start, it's going to feel like pins just sticking you everywhere and you ain't going to know what to do. You're going to feel like a failed parent. That's what it's going to be. That's horrible too. You feel like a failed parent? It is very horrible. It is very horrible. And then it's like when you come as a blended family, it's kind of like, woo, you really got to pick yourself up because now you got someone else's kids looking up to you. You know what I mean? So you dropping out just on, not on, if you have, like, I have my own son, obviously, but, you know, I'm doing what I need to do for him. But now that I'm coming in this family with you, I have to be like, oh, now I have to, you know, showcase my knowledge and, you know, my, my, my good spirit. (laughs) For now. <laughs> With your kids, you know what I'm saying? But I also have, I just have to do my part just times four, times five, however many kids it is. Oh, God. But. It's a lot. It's not, it's not an easy thing to do because I feel like a lot of people, you think about it, obviously, when you first meet, you know what I mean? So, of course, when you told me you have four kids, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, that's not, to me, it's not a deal breaker. Um, But once you guys start hanging out with each other and, you know, you get to know each other. Um, you start to build that bond and you're just like, oh, okay, like I can do this, but it's still so tough. Cause you just have these moments where you feel like everyone's still trying to fill each other out or like awkward moments. You know what I mean? Like, or if you leave me in the car with one of your kids, it's like, damn, who going to talk first? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, That's but, weird. No, is it but like that? no, it sometimes it is. What about it's when like, you and the baby in the car together? We be talking. He don't even know how to talk. He be way. talking to me, but we don't it's like, sometimes he'll do like today. He was asleep. He wasn't talking when he got up. He was talking to himself because he he woke up in like a shock. He you know because you left and he was just like <laughs> I was like oh shoot, but no, I don't have any issues like that. Um, I feel like your kids gravitate towards me well. I feel like my son gravitates towards you well. Do you think my kids are easy kid easily kidnappable? <sighs> we're not, we're. I'm sorry. Kidnapping is not on this episode. I know. I just want to ask. Do you think they're easily kidnappable? I'm going to say three out of four, yes. Three out of four are kidnappable? Mm-hmm. Damn, that's all of them. I ain't going to tell you who. I ain't going to say it. It's care. the youngest three. Because <laughs> there's nobody no. else. I'm not telling you who the I think is going to be kidnappable? kidnapped. Dang. How do you get kidnapped at 16 years old? It's impossible. Now I'm playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Oh snap! He didn't got a taste of that. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> grow up. <laughs> but honestly, I think that it's it's really a hard thing. And you know, another hard thing about blending the family is all the kids getting along. That is very scary. That's something that I dealt with on them. I feel like it was more scary for me than it would be for you mm-hmm. because you have four kids. I only have one. Right. So my baby doesn't have siblings. He never, you know, he has little cousins and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but he never has someone around him all the time. You know, he doesn't have a brotherly figure like that. So I feel like him coming in to your boys was kind of like a shock. You know, I was scared. I didn't know how they were going to treat him. You thought they was going to tie him up and I thought they were because up. they they have very different Are personalities. Are you calling my kids ghetto? They are, Your Honor. <laughs> but it's like my son is very, you know, quiet, mellow. Oh, okay. He's not quiet. <laughs> he's not. Have you seen that little boy <laughs> running around my house? Okay, my baby. <laughs> but it's like he's not, he's getting, like, he's around other kids now. He's around boys. And it's like he's coming into that element. You know what I mean? Like, they really bring it out of him. Like, stuff I ain't never seen my son do. I'm just like, oh, okay. But when he starts cussing, we're going to have a problem. Anywho, he cusses. He gonna cuss on his no, own because my not. kids do not use swear words. Mm. Anywho, <laughs> <laughs> um, my kids do not use the devil's. But no, language. I think I think our kids coming together is like. I mean, of course, the older kids the don't old- really have much in common. You know, like the mm-hmm. young, the younger three blended. Mm-hmm. I don't even see the older kids. Yeah, they kind of just do their own thing. I don't ever see them. I don't see him either. But it's not, it's no, there's no awkwardness. Like they all hang out in the same room together. They, Mm -hmm. you know, they're all pretty independent. Then they, you know, play with each other sometimes. But I feel like, yes, I do still have scary moments. And, you know, it's just a scary feeling blending a family. Like I don't know. Like that first fight between one of them is going to be. That's going to be, that's going to be the thing. We're going to be like, who going to help who? 
I mean, conflict resolution. We're going to have to just conflict figure resolution. it out. I honestly don't see them fighting. Even though kids fight all the time, I feel yeah. like your son's personality is like too chill for a conflict to transpire. Yeah. He, I don't know. My baby is just like, I always teach my son, like, if you need to, just walk away. Right. You know what I mean? Even if it's at like school, wherever you're at, just walk away. And I'm not saying that in a suck away or, you know, just being disrespectful. Just avoid the conflict if you can. You know what I mean? Like we can figure out something. If you have to come get me and I help you with it and we figure out something together and we all come together, then that's what we need to do. But I'd rather them not I'd rather the him point. not sit there and have a screaming match or, you know, start blaming people or calling people out their names. Oh you know, if Lord. you can if you can de escalate from the jump, if you can teach them that, then I feel like you're on to something. Yeah. I don't know. I just think that uh I don't I don't see those type of situations happening because like for one, my kids don't like bully people. Your Honor, roll the tape. <laughs> <laughs> they bully they don't like they don't like bully They bully each other. They bully each other. But they don't bully outside people unless it's like a unless it's like a friendly bully. You know, like they ain't just picking Your Honor, on- <clears throat> I'm sorry, roll the tapes from school. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, but to be honest, we don't know what they do in school. We don't know. We don't know what they do in school. Anything, you know what I'm saying? It's like we just have to this, trust that we're, you know. That, that 14 year old is pretty mean. Boy, that 14 year old aggressive. He a little mean. He he ain't backing down, baby. But I don't see him doing that to like uh, any. Well, yeah, I do see him doing that to innocent person. Maybe we should just keep him him away from. You know what I'm saying? And just to keep it safe. No, because he's got, you know, he he's really good at like speaking his mind. You know what I mean? He's really yeah. good at expressing himself, and he's not gonna back down like this. He he's not gonna be disrespected. Let's just put it like that. Yeah. So he's gonna do what he has to do, say what he has to say, and he'll talk to his parents later about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll talk he gonna to his tell parents you the later. whole story and be like, "So what do we do now?" Mm-hmm. Because this, this I is do what think happened. he intentionally threw that orange at that yard, did it? No. <laughs> I think he did that shit too. I say, I ain't whatever, mean. whatever that, whatever that yard that he said he did, he did. That he shit. did that shit, no, for real. Because woo. Because how do you hit? How do you a hit yard duty like on that? accident with an orange? Hmm. Think about this, y'all. Think about it. Think about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. no. But what do you think about separate? What do you think about parenting styles? I think this is the blended family thing. If you have kids and the other person have kids and y'all plan on doing something serious, and this is why I always think that it's important to talk about what your plan is with the person that you are with mm-hmm. or as early as possible. Yes. I don't think that you're crazy by seeing someone, maybe not on the first date or the second date, but by the third date, you should be at least knowing what your intentions are with the other person. Like y'all should mm-hmm. know what y'all doing. I mean, things can change. You might only want to do something platonic with somebody and then it turned into something else yeah but for me i want to know what is we doing let's work towards this Mm -hmm. i'm gonna work towards this we gonna do this together that way there ain't no blurred lines or nothing like that and you Mm -hmm. don't come to know i mean you're gonna always hit some type of roadblocks but i just think it's so much easier to get over those roadblocks if you start early right you know agreed agreed we got very separate parenting styles we do we do. I was going to say the you first. Mean. I'm not mean. Because you mean I'm yell. really nice. She be yelling at them kids. I do not yell, but I'm also not going to let you just get away with anything. Like, I believe in discipline. I believe in teaching right from wrong. If Daniel had you don't two let, motherfucking goddamn whole ass apples. That's how you was just talking to <laughs> a yo 10 year old. Thank you. First of all, my baby, he know his maths. He had some crazy stuff just the other day, though. I don't nah, know what no he was excuses, doing. Nah, no excuses, brother. <laughs> no, we both didn't know what he was doing. Teacher, stop sending that crazy shit you. home. Send some instructions I, home for the parents, I too, goddamn. Because what the hell was I that? I believe you. I can't help my baby with math. I'd be like, call your uncle. Golly, that shit I was crazy what he came home with. I said, you better be a motherfucking mathematician when you get done mm-hmm. with this. That That's degree crazy. better come after that packet that he had to turn in. Because yeah, where, where, where was the crayons? <sighs> Look. I'm sick of it. Look, our parenting styles. I think they. I think our parenting styles really kind of match up to who we are, just as individuals. Mm-hmm. Like you are very scattered. 
I'm not defaming my boyfriend, y'all. I love him dearly, but he is very scattered, and I am. he does have he has no sense of time management. Um, you just going you just going attack me with time management. I just said I been, was, yes, I am. I'm going to keep saying it. She has been attacking me with the word time management for. The I last, have to in order long? for him to get a grip. These last, these last, I have to get him to get a grip because been my the more ass with the word time management. No, because the more confusing and you know the more unorganized you are the, the kids are going to feel unorganized they're going to feel it's like they're hard. being tugged and pulled and that's why you know you have to have some type of schedule me i like to plan my day even though you know nothing's gonna nothing is ever going to go as planned mm-hmm. you can plan from hour to hour nothing is ever going to go as planned and i feel i understand that but at least give yourself time at least give yourself room to you know breathe a little bit and not have to you know know what you're doing no ahead no schedules ahead of time that's why we blended it, our families because <laughs> you are good at that, and I am, honestly am not. Like I will lose a whole day. Okay, so yeah, you will. So say for instance, for me with my son, my son does go. He goes to sleep at eight thirty. He he's not a he's not a night owl. His kids will stay up until like one o'clock in the morning, and I'm like, what are you doing it's as the a weekend. kid at it was one the o'clock? Week, it was the weekend. No, right baby, it'd be during the week. They'd be up until midnight. <laughs> I'm like, what are you? You're not going to tell them to go to sleep. Like, what is going on? But for me. They up. It's the up all night show. But it's good. Like they kids, might be but working kids graveyard need sleep. They, they need older. sleep. They, they need an sleep. adequate amount of sleep to they function. Do. You know what I'm saying? When they get up and they all groggy and da 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 then they don't have time to eat Facts. breakfast. And they be sleep in the car on the Exactly. And you know these kids sleep. don't eat that school food, so they need to get up and eat. You know, I don't care if it's just oatmeal. Get them something in their bellies before they go to school. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They like eat before they go to school. They be down there making their. That's stuff. fine, but you not li- that okay? Rebuttal. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> he always got something to just snap back with. That you missing the whole point? No, because you because you painting the picture. Them kids don't. I'm eat saying, food. but it's they not every food. day. Maybe it's not every day. Sometimes nah, you be oversleeping and you be having to rush out or something. Nah, they and, do need to. Uh, they do need to go to sleep on school. And I'm not earlier. saying make it hella strict, but just be like, okay, y'all, we gonna we gonna you know quiet it down around. That's how they do at their, nine o'clock. They said at their mom's house, they go to sleep at a regular time. Are we at their mom's house? No, I'm just saying on the week. Are we at their mom's house? No, but I'm saying they're used to it. Stick to our house. (laughs) I'm saying they're used to it. That's fine. So I can implement that here because they already do it over there. That's fine. Yeah. They said 12 o'clock over there, which is still late. On the weekend? You think that's late on the weekend? I mean, on the weekend, I don't care how how late you stay up. It's just don't be hella loud. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But during the week, yes, they do need to get to sleep by a decent hour so they can get a full night's sleep. Wake up, get everything done, and let that be that. I'm talking about showering, especially you know doing sports and stuff. They need to be washing their asses mm-hmm. almost every night. Okay, every no, night. not almost every night. Every night, washing them feet. One of them ones be they be sneaking by. They be sneak- no, you let him sneak by. He be sneaking by. Look, cause baby, <laughs> he play a lot of sports. <sighs> he play a lot of sports. Mm-mm. We're going to no get him right. Excuses, okay. We're going to get him right. But see, my, for me, it's like, that's, again, our different parenting styles. For me, like, my baby knows he's going to get in the shower. Routine. He has not even, a, yeah, it's kind of a routine. Um, but I'm not really, I'm not too, too strict on it because he's used to it now. Mm-hmm. You know, as, as he's grown up, you know, it was hard to get him. And my son has a hard time with transitioning. So going from one one situation one to the next or, you know, one activity to the next, Um but he's he's pretty much got it down. He knows he needs to wake up, brush his teeth, wash his face. Um, you know, he clean up after himself, uh, take his shoes off when he comes in the house. You know, routines like that. And that's something that we both, you know, have in common. My son, be, he be messing up over here, though. He be running all through the house. Man, he shoes. be firing my I damn know, but we're going to work on it. We're going to work on it because I don't, like, he doesn't get the concept of, oh, I have to do it at his house, too. Not I, just at mine. This my clean ass carpet I got down there. This carpet is not It's clean. a little clean. It's no, it's not. It's clean. Okay. You damn near can eat off this carpet. Absolutely not. If it I'll, falls, I'll pass. If, if it falls on the napkin, I'll pass. <laughs> I'll falls. pass. <laughs> oh, and let's talk about the, the dinner. Me, I don't even. My my son does not eat after like eight thirty. Like I said, he goes to sleep at eight thirty. So anything right, right, after right. eight thirty is just like oh, we be eating not, late over here. First of all, he doesn't even cook until like eleven p.m. No, it be done at eleven p.m. Oh, I don't start yeah. cooking. Sorry, it's done at eleven p.m. And he starts at like eight. <laughs> I don't know how to cook. Look, I'm I'm proud of you for starting to cook and, you know, getting in the kitchen and doing that stuff and being it's able hard. to cook for your kids. Because that's, especially after the long days that he has, like, it's very, 
I'm very proud of you for doing that. Let me just we, say that. We have say very, thank you. Thank you, babe. We have very long days. Like this, like all my kids is in extracurricular activities. So they start early, like what six? They up at six o'clock, and they don't be getting home till like eight fifteen. No, oh no, no, because the oldest one don't get out of his. Uh, last practice till like 8 15 8 30 and then they mm-hmm. coming home so it's like and then the 10 year old he's in two sports three sports now so it's like they are out all day mm-hmm. doing something all day and it's hard because i still you know i gotta work you know you feel me walgreens ain't they ain't they ain't let me get days off so it's like you know i didn't call the manager a couple of times Mm-hmm. told him about you know my you know i gotta get my kids you know i got a family emergency and it's like well it's gonna be a real family emergency when i fire your ass and okay. you can't pay your rent mm-hmm. I said damn mr gerald well now why would you I'm st- <laughs> <laughs> you think you think they're gonna fire me, <laughs> gonna fire me. why did you use that name <laughs> I'm fired. <laughs> Can we block it out? What's the timestamp on that? No, nope, this is too late. You think they, they're going to stop me from getting prescriptions and everything from there? Yes. Damn. You're done. You think the another Walgreens gonna... will hire me? No. no. I'm going looking... in a file. Do start... not hire. I'm going to start looking for another job. You think Rite Aid will hire me if I get fired at Walgreens? They're like closing Rite Aid's down. So, no. What? You're probably going to get laid off what within about, two weeks. What about the CVS? They, CVS be open. No. No? Mm-mm. Damn. That's all the drug stores. Too bad. Find a really good job so I don't have to work anymore. Thank you. I'm trying to be a stay-at-home dad and she ain't allowing it to happen, so. Yeah, What's the- <laughs> so, when we talk about blended families, mm-hmm. there is the factors. You know we're going to get into the nitty-gritty, baby girl. When you a blended family... Not all the time, but a lot of the time, there is not only the two parents that are getting together involved, but you still have to have the outside, the other parents. The other, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> the, the who? The who? My baby came huh. from the stork. Uh, exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you still got to have the other parents because let's just be honest. Those other parents can and they have destroyed people's blended families. Yes. You got to have a control of those outside things. Well, see, that's the thing. Sometimes you don't have Sometimes you can't even have control. But you do what you can. <clears throat> you do what you can. And it's all about approach. It's all about, you know, being an adult about the situation. Very much so an adult. Being able to communicate because and listen without reacting. And right. you know what I'm saying? Listening to really listen. Because there's, there's a couple of different factors to this, right? So you got... The two people that are together, right? Mm-hmm. You can have those two people together in the outside parents, the either the baby mama or the baby daddy, is constantly attacking their relationship. Mm-hmm. Whether it be you're arguing mm-hmm. with the the step parent or you're arguing with the person that they had the kid with, right? Mm-hmm. Then there's the on the flip side, you've got the two people that are together that have blended their family, mm-hmm. and you have one person or two people out of those out of those two people that have not let go of the bickering with the other parent. So, for instance, like, let's just say me and you are together, but you just constantly tripping with your baby daddy about something. Mm-hmm. And that could also lead to a thing that's like, why the fuck is you always tripping with your baby daddy? Mm-hmm. Leave that nigga alone so we can worry about our own thing. Mm-hmm. So, I feel like you should be, you have to be able to control the controllables. Of course, you can't control everything, but I think that as far as the two people on the inside, the outside noise should be coming from the outside and not from the inside out. Right. You know, it should be easy, manageable, but it's hard. Like for me, I just have to shut shit down. I mean, when it comes to like communicating with my baby daddy, we, unless it's about my, my kid, you don't need to talk to me. Uh. And it's not to have an evil spirit. It's not to, you know, based on what we, me and him went through. It's just co-parenting. Like there's nothing we need to talk about unless it's involving my kid. No aggression. I don't need to go back and forth with you because, like I said, I'm teaching my son to walk away, right? So he needs to he needs to be able to see me walking away. Well, not like that, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm walking, walking away right from the, the situation family. because I don't want any conflict. I don't really care what's going on on your end, what's going on in your family. You know, unless my son, I feel like my son is in danger on your end or something. Mm-hmm. 
I'm not worried about it. As long as you're doing what you need to do as a parent and we can come together and, you know, make something shake, okay. But other than that, there is nothing that needs to be said. We don't need to see each other. There, there shouldn't have to be any arguing, any disagreements. I mean. It does take some time. I do feel like it's very important that at least you should be able to have a good line of communication with the other parent and if the other step parent or the other parent who's the other person in the relationship, what am I trying to say? What was I trying to say? I don't know. Okay, so look. You're re- referencing me, basically. I'm, I will be the other person in the relationship. Or if you're talking about me and my baby daddy, you were saying you would do what? Oh, yeah. So for me, yes, exactly. For me, I have to be like more of, uh, it really also depends on the other parent too. Like how much is the other parent involved? How much do they care about the other person being in? Not even care about because if you ain't with your baby mama, then it don't really matter Mm because there's somebody else there and you just got to deal with that, right? Mm -hmm. But are you supporting that or are you letting your feelings mess up? everything being cohesive, you know, Mm -hmm. like if one of my baby mamas got to do it or something like that. And I'm just worried about what that nigga doing. Mm -hmm. Instead of just worrying about taking care of the kid and making sure that shit works Mm -hmm. and making sure that you and the other dude have an open line of communication and knowing that he has the best interest for your kid and things like that, without you putting your feelings in the way that you have with your other parent. Yeah. That like all that. That's plays gonna make a, not only is it gonna make the co parenting sour, it's gonna make your relationship sour. Right. And that's what you don't want. So And you don't want your kids growing up looking at you like, damn daddy, you was a whole ass nigga, boy. Why is you acting like that? No, for real. <laughs> it's a it's a horrible look. Like that I said, it's it's look. all about minding your own business. It. I and dealt with it. That's that's an, that's another thing too when it comes to like meeting baby mamas and be, uh, meeting baby daddies and stuff like that. It's kinda mm-hmm. like, okay, well, you as the person that used to deal with them, you'll know what you know. You'll know the two people coming together. Right. I know you, and I know my baby daddy. Mm-hmm. Do I feel like it's okay for y'all to meet? Of course. If I felt like it wasn't, then I would say something. Mm-hmm. But I also would never put my relationship or you in a situation where it's like, uh, uh-uh. uh. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all got some bullshit going on. <laughs> I'm not even finna deal with y'all because that's some crazy ass shit to be dealing with. You know what I'm saying? Right. On somebody on the other party's behalf. It takes maturity. But it takes maturity. It maturity. definitely does. And unfortunately, a lot of people will not mature. And again, you just have to figure out the best way to manage it and go on about your life. I mean, can we public it's all service? In the, it's all in the justice for the kid, niggas, baby Ain't daddies. Shit. Sorry, you, you ain't have to do all that. Sorry, you didn't have to do that. Baby daddies, <laughs> baby mamas, if the person that you had a kid with has went off and did their own thing, blended another family or did something, got a girlfriend, and whoop 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 if y'all not together, you just got to accept that that person has moved on and that person has gotten someone else. Yeah. All you can do is put your feelings to the side and wish them the best, wish them the best. And just make sure that your kid is straight. Not even that. You don't have to wish me the best, cause just you don't. You're right. You don't have to wish. You me ain't the best. gotta do all that, cause I don't. But get out your feelings. Shit. Yeah. Get out that's your feelings. That's the main thing of it, because my thing, and you're that's where you, that's where you have to trust the, that your co-parent, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. is going to trust and really get to know this person that is going to be around your kids. I had it bad. So I had it bad. I I was one of those immature people at first. Mm-hmm. Before, way before, way before, way before, with my first kid's mom, mm-hmm. I was very, very immature. Mm-hmm. I was an ain't shit nigga, did ain't shit shit, and mm-hmm. me and her stopped talking to each other, and she got another dude, and I, I, I did whole, I was acting like a whole ass nigga. I wanted to fight the nigga. I was didn't even before even meeting the meeting him and seeing yeah. that he was cool dude and all that stuff. Just being in my feelings and shit like that. Mm-hmm. So that's why I could say on the outside looking in. And on the inside looking out, you feel me? I've been the person on the inside, and I've been the person to have to look back and see what the fuck going on. Right. You feel me? And, you know, I got lucky because it really be some niggas out here that get with your baby mama and start acting really, really strange. Like, mm-hmm. they don't respect that you're involved in your kid's life. They want to be the they macho man. They just want you to, like, disappear or something. Yeah, you like, know, like, I'm nigga, I'm not here. going anywhere. And yeah, try you to know. kill me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Unless you want some of that show. <laughs> no, for real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But it's it really be some niggas who do weird shit behind some... 
I'm just gonna say refurbished pussy. Pussy. You don't have to act like that. You can have a nigga baby mama, and she can be with you, and you don't have to try to push the daddy away or try yeah. to make it seem like you more of a man. Just take care yeah. of your take care of your shit. And that's another reason why communication is so important. Because, say for instance, um, my baby goes to get his hair cut at the barbershop, right? Mm -hmm. So, what if it was a thing? You know, if if it was a bonding moment for him and his dad to do that, I would communicate like, "Hey, babe, on Thursdays." His dad's gonna come get him and take him to the barbershop. Mm -hmm. That's letting you know his involvement involvement in my son's life. That's their opportunity to bond, and that's just the nature of that relationship. You right. know what I mean? And again, that's some. I just feel like that's something like those moments are very important to communicate because it allows room, like just clear air. Like you know what I mean? You don't have to worry about. Why didn't think of popping up at my house? You know what I mean? Like, why he over here trying to get his kid? And it's like, no, he has a that's, reason. Like, and he's that's here weird for a reason. To, to even trip like that. Like, why this nigga coming to get his? You, yeah, it's his kid. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> I mean, Is typically, it? typically it will be more so like I would drop him off or something like that because I I don't like people just coming to my house. But you know what I mean? I don't know. I'm just. I've like seen that. enough. I've seen enough. Uh, I've sat down on enough cases while I was in family court mm -hmm. to see how important it is that niggas be with their kids and stuff. I've seen niggas really go in there yeah. and be fighting for their kids. And so. it's important. It's like you establish, it's all a part of the blended family, the parenting, the, you know, just knowing what each other's lives consist of as individuals coming together. Yeah. That it takes a village. So I had to learn your kids' not... schedule. I had to learn, you know, your kids ain't going to be here on certain days. Okay. My baby not gonna be here on certain days, and as a blended family, can we try to come together and get the kids here at the same time? We can try. It makes things a whole <laughs> lot easier when everyone could work together and do things. It mm -hmm. makes birthday parties a whole lot cheaper when yes. all of the parents can get along. Because you know, me and my kids, mom, we just well, did we just start having birthdays together and shit like that? But it makes it a whole lot cheaper mm -hmm. when everyone could come together and everybody ain't fighting each other, everybody egos ain't out there and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Co-parenting and getting along with the other parent and all that shit makes things a whole lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. Do y'all niggas care about saving money? I don't think they do. Crickets. Crickets. <laughs> What's I got? Crickets. My wallets, Look, boy. I mean, I would love to. I would love to get to that point. Oh, but crickets baby, for you because you can't say. But I, you can do it. I can't. Hey, right? look, I can't. Not at this moment. I, but <laughs> am I always open to it? Of course. Like I always want that line of communication to be there. I always want it to be an option. Mm -hmm. But I do not take it for granted because, boy, them parties are expensive. Especially the more people start coming and the older the kids get, and the more shit they want to do. Mm -hmm. Can you pay a little bit on this? Yeah. <laughs> Could you put a little down on this? Because. Uh, you no, get, for real. How about I pay for this and you get the cake and the pizza and things like that? Something. That's, that, that, that's something. That, communicate. Communicate. Get some, okay. some sodas and some cups. You ain't got to do nothing crazy. Just, just get something. Some, some. We can get some finger food. No, I'm some playing. finger food. Something. <laughs> can we do this at your I house or something? What we going to do? Look. <laughs> no, if it's going to be a joint party, we ain't doing it at nobody's house. No? It's oh. going to be at a park or something. Park? Somewhere. It's yeah. hot though. What do we I don't care. We're going to figure out something. They got inside. Uh, they always got some shit. Urban, ur urban air. They always got something. Yeah, exactly. So but, I'm with as long as it's we can share the expenses. Yes, I, that's <laughs> ideal. I mean, that's ideal. If you can get to ideal, that point, man. then yes, go for it. I'm not saying it has to be something right off the back when it comes to co-parenting, but is it something to work towards? Of course. Like you want, you know what I'm saying? And for your kids to be able to see that your parents are not together, but still can, you know, be cohesive together. That's so important. Very important. Because so important. they're not going to see any hate. They're not going to see each other rolling each other's eyes. That it, you know, it's. It's a good feeling for them. It makes them feel like, dang, I can have all my folks together. Like, even when it comes to the step parents, like, dang, I got all these people with me. Like, right. okay. I I had a conversation. Like your son, like your oldest, he going when we went to his football thing, mm -hmm. he gonna look back like, dang, I had both my parents and my step parents there. Right. Da, 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 da. Like, I don't think people know how. <laughs> I don't think people understand how important that is. And I it got put to perspective to me because their stepdad is like really involved with like the sports and things like that. So mm -hmm. he come to the games and things like that. And, and we'd like have talks about like them at school and, and you know, all the athletic stuff, the educational things like that. Like he's yeah. an involved step parent, mm -hmm. you know, and it was like, he was like, you don't understand. They don't understand how lucky they have, how lucky they are to have two positive male role models in their life right. that care about them being successful. Yes. So, 
We are called mother's parents. Yeah, y'all gotta y'all really gotta think about how much do y'all love y'all kids Mm -hmm. when it comes to how you deal with the other parents, step parents, and things like that. Because one thing for sure, and I know this in real time, is that kids get older. And the things that you do going back and forth with the other parent and stuff like that, they get older, they recognize it. You can't lie to them forever. Mm -hmm. They're going to be able to make up their own truth or they're going to be able to decipher between the bullshit that you tell them and what really goes on. on And they're going to call you on your shit. They're going to call you on your They're going to call you on your shit. Now, can you handle that? A 14 year old or a 16 year old or maybe younger than that being Mm -hmm. like, you know what, daddy, I don't believe that. Mom, Mm -hmm. I don't believe that. That just don't get it. Mm-mm. They're going to hit you with, you're full of shit. You're full of shit. <laughs> and uh, you need to explain yourself. <laughs> right. No, for real. It's like. Because it hurts. And it's like, like I said, when you have kids that can really express themselves, you're in deep doo-doo. Because deep. when I say they're going to they gonna put it all on the table, baby, it's going to be some red table talk. Yeah, that's why I like, that's why I'm really transparent with my kids as far as like shit that goes on in my life and taking accountability for the fucked up shit that I have done mm-hmm. while they were growing up. Well, they're still growing up. Mm -hmm. But the things that I have done that have affected them to today's date, Mm -hmm. taking accountability for it, being able to apologize to them for what I have done, and and then being able to work towards correcting that and, you know, building on top of that. I don't want my kids growing up with a whole lot of baggage. Mm -hmm. You know, I've done enough that has contributed to the baggage that they may carry into their adult life. Mm -hmm. I can take accountability for the things that I've did. Mm -hmm. And I feel like parents have to be able to put their pride to the side for the sake of their kids. Yes. It's so important. It's so important. You do not want to be 30 years old with a parent who will not take accountability for the fucked up shit they did. Mm -hmm. And you still just holding on to it. (laughs) Cause for what? Cause for fucking what? For what? It's a lot, man. It's a lot. It's a lot. It is. It is. So, but all in all, the kids, they're going to look up to you. And I feel like I'm more of that parent who, care, like, I really care for kids, like, well-being. And that's why I'm heavy on, like, kids being able to express themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm super big with mental check-ins. Like, let me know how you're doing mentally. Yes. You yes. know, what's going on at school? Like, how are you feeling? How are you doing? Because a lot of the times, you're a very jokeful parent. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're both very jokeful. We're both very goofy. We but are I can... I feel like I can flip the switch easier than you. You can. And I can turn more serious. And, you, you know, I feel, I don't even know. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out why I'm stuck with you. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get stuck with me? I don't know. <laughs> but no, I have that switch where I can just be like, talk to me. Yeah. Let, tell me what's going on. You know what I mean? If your 14 year old call me up and be like, Joy, this girl trying to fight me, this dude trying to fight me, boop, boop, boop. I'm coming here. Um, no, I'm just playing. I ain't gonna do. I'm not that type. Of why is you knocking on? Why is you knocking on? I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. She fight no, little I kids. No, I wouldn't do that. I don't. Mm-mm. She Never said, would Come I. On. Never would I. <laughs> Are you but no, I am. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> but no, you, you got to me, love. Boo-boo. You got shut up. <laughs> you got to love these babies. You gotta, and that's all a part of like being a co-parent too. It's. The same love that you give your own child, you have to give to your Ooh, stepchildren. You hit the nail on the head. And you hit the nail on the head. To me, I know. And it's like, you know, we always word to other people like, oh, yeah, my stepson, my stepson this, my stepson that. And it's like, in my mind, that's my kid. You mm-hmm. know, it's not biologically mine. You know what I'm saying? I don't see the the wrong in saying, like, if somebody was like, oh, whose son is this? I'll be like, mine. Because they belong to me. Technically, fact. they do belong to me. Fun fact. You know what I mean? Fun fact. What fun fact? I got a, I got a stepkid. You do. I got a 16 year old who is not really my stepkid. Mm-hmm. He's like basically my biological kid. Mm-hmm. I've been in his life since he was like a newborn, damn near, basically. And you really do have to like, I, I don't, I don't, I ask, I ask him a lot. Like, do you feel like you're treated different, viewed different? Mm-hmm. Do you notice any differences between how I treat you and how I treat? The rest of them. I ain't even going to say my kids because they're all my kids. Yeah. But there's literally no difference. Like, there's people who don't even know that he's not my biological kid. Mm -hmm. Like, there's people who be like, y'all look just like each other. Y'all act just like each other. Mm -hmm. That's because he's mine. Yeah. And let me let me tell you one thing. I will fight his daddy to the death. I don't know. Oh, I don't know where yet, wow, but let me see. You can't have that one. You, left really you quick. can't have that one back. That's oh, mine, baby. Okay. That's mine. Go make you another one. Mm. Okay. 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 Well, yeah, that same love and respect <laughs> and 
you know what I'm saying? That you give to, you know, your biologicals. It has to be. And when I say that child belongs to me, I'm not saying that in like a deep ass, like annoying, disrespectful way. Right. I'm saying I will protect that child as if they were my own. You have Meaning to. if there was an emergency going on and you and the biological mother couldn't get there, I'm going to be looked at as that person to go, you know, and, and take action. And mm-hmm. I that's for, that's a responsibility that I feel like you have to be able to accept in that type of blended family. You know, so like I said, the the love, the the support, you just have to be there, and they have to know that you are there for the right reason. You know what I mean? You 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 want them to know that you love them. Where what in every aspect? What would the timeline be in a perfect world? Mm-hmm. Let's just say you and the other parent get along, or maybe the other parents not in the picture, right? Mm-hmm. Let's just say you and the person you are with have a. You're a stepchild to their kid, right? Let's just say you and that person. You mean step? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sorry, my pronouns were incorrect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's just say you and a step parent had a stepchild in common, right? Mm-hmm. It was that parent's kid. Mm-hmm. You and that parent got into a serious relationship. You guys were together for a few years. Let's just say maybe let's just say six, random off the top, mm-hmm. and then you and that parent don't want to be together anymore you guys break up mm. what wow. how is your relationship with that kid we don't fuck with you no more oh. hey. <laughs> <laughs> what? when your daddy left nigga you did you, too okay god damn what what you want me to do what i'm still gonna go to your games or something no no we got to cut ties is that conditional love no i don't know i don't know how That's to feel con- about that it's really hard because obviously you built that bond with that kid and when they see you on the streets, they're always going to think like, oh, she was there for me. Like she was at all my games. Like you may be in some of the pictures and the yeah. pictures going to stay in that house. You you never know. So I feel like that's a very hard situation to, to deal with. But I do think there is a way to um, fade it off, if that makes sense, Damn. but still be cordial. I think I have. Let me finish. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. You're right. I'm s- no, nah, I don't know. Oh, but, but you ain't want to finish no, no, no. raising that child, though. But oh, you want to finish your up. sentence. You are so annoying. <laughs> no, but like, there's a way to like actually have a talk. Like, I feel like you, even though you guys separated, mm-hmm. you can still come together and figure out a way to talk to the kid and let them know and understand. Especially if that are, if that are at an um, older age, it's and they can really now. exactly it's over now. exactly the kid gonna be in their room. <laughs> it's never a right time to say goodbye. <laughs> <I don't laughs> but know. no, I feel like there's a way to talk to the kid and let them know what's going on. You know, have them understand that you guys are not together. Right. Um, but at the same time, if that person is not going to start dating like right off the back or something. But it, again, you never know with that, too. So it's really a sticky situation. Mm-hmm. But I do feel like you can at least prepare for the distance. You know what I mean? There's a way for you to p- prepare for it and not have them take it so traumatic to heart. Yeah. I've heard some shitty stories about step parents who were there had kids, had their own kids, and then abandoned. Well, not abandoned. Let's just, they broke up with the other parent, right? Mm-hmm. And then they took care of the kids that they had together. Yeah. But then stopped taking care of the stepkids. Yeah. That's, it's, it's, uh, it's weird. <laughs> That's some fucked up shit. It's weird. And it'd be the kids that came after. Mm-hmm. It'd be the kids that came after. Like, damn, you can't take care of me too. You was taking care of me this whole time. And then. I know, it was it, a, but then it, it just becomes awkward. Like if that person gets into another relationship, because they're gonna be like, "Why are you still so bonded with these kids?" Or like that that person, you know what I mean? Because those kids belong to that person, so that's still a tie to that person. I don't know. So I, it's a weird situation. Like I don't, I don't know. For me, I don't know why I would feel like if something, if me and you were to break up, which is not gonna happen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, what would I feel about your kids? I mean, the way your kids are, they done seen so much shit. They'd be like, "Fuck joy, go get the fuck on." <laughs> but and, you know, in a perfect world, like you said, I would still want them to think of me as an adult that still supports them and loves and cares about them. You know what I mean? Because I still genuinely, even though me and your your dad are not together, I still want the best for you in life. Ooh, put you on the spot. Are you still going to get him that PS5? Absolutely not. <laughs> you were, never my, not fin- you were that- never my financial burden. What? You said you were going to get him that PS5, baby? That's crazy. You reneging? You was a re. It's gonna be a PS. I still love you. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> that's the only PS you getting from me. Damn. I can't. I'm sorry. That's hella funny that you. That was, you was quick. Let me get some of that. Let me get some of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got some downstairs. You can have some. Mm-hmm. It's hot in this motherfucker. If you hear some buzzing, it's the <sighs> fan. It's the fan, y'all. No, I don't. The reason why I, I asked know. that question is, I've had the luxury of being able to have a step kid. And still be able to be in his life, even after I have ended the relationship with his parent. And we've been doing it for like for years, Mm -hmm. like forever. And it's never ended. So that's the only reason. But but see, and then with me, I've never had like the mindset to be like, me and mama don't fuck with each other. They get the fuck out. I don't fuck with you neither. Mm -hmm. Because to me... Maybe I just got too big of a heart, though. To me, I would feel bad going to pick up the kids that me and her had together and then not come pick him up or for him to come over or, and not have the same thing that my other kids got. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. And then I know people who ha- are older who have dealt with a parent basically being like, me and your mom's not together or me and daddy not together. I can't fuck with you no I more. I can't help you. Don't call after, me. Yeah, after they've had that <laughs> long-ass relationship, like, do you, that to me, that's conditional love. I can love you if me and your parent is still together. That, to me, is kind of fake. And I don't want to build no bonds with no kids like that. Yeah. Because so, it really puts them in yeah. an awkward position because then they're going to be like, well, shit, can I even call Joy anymore? Like, will she come pick me up? Or, like, is she going to come to my football game? Right. Is she gonna buy me snacks? Yeah. You never know. You just never know. And, and that's that's the hard thing about kids. It's like you never know how they're gonna take it. And it's still But it's always worth it to a, talk to them. See where their head is at, see mm-hmm. how they're gonna take it. Um, support them as best as you can, be there for them. Um PS5. distract them. No, distract not with the PS five. PS five, perfect distraction. No. Mm mm. Take them somewhere. You know, I mean, not like that. I ain't saying go broke trying to support your kids like that. <laughs> support that man because, nigga, at this point, get the fuck over it. No. <laughs> get over it. Nigga, goddamn, you 27, boy. Get the hell no, on. No, but it's like, you know, teach them other things in life. Like, I don't know. I don't I don't know. It's so hard to even talk about that because it's something that you don't really prepare for. You know, you get into a relationship and you're just like, we're going to see it out to the end. Woo, woo, woo. Do you think it's fucked up if, let's just say, me and you was together, right? We and are together, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we is together. <laughs> he want to be single so bad. He don't no. want me no more. <laughs> he don't want me no more. No, no, that's not what I meant. Let's just say mm-hmm. we were together. We you are together. Finish the whole sentence. Okay. That's, that's your problem. You speaker. always jump into conclusions. I need you to jump into this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Go. Damn. Okay, let's just say me and you were together mm-hmm. since. Let's just say my baby. Me and you were together since my baby was two. Okay? And. <laughs> we were. <laughs> <laughs> Were we? I can't breathe. Were yes. We? Just think about how old your child is. I was okay. here for his birthday. You're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. One and a half. Okay. <laughs> God say, damn. You was here since mm-hmm. he was one and a half, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then y'all built a really, really close bond. Mm-hmm. Like y'all, y'all had routines that y'all did together. Let's just say. You took him to T-ball games and whoop de whoop de whoop de whoop. You guys mm-hmm. got pictures together. Y'all did a lot. And y'all mm-hmm. bonded. We and this lasted up until that until he was like ten or eleven. Mm-hmm. Okay, so think about the bond that you create with the kid when you're that close to ten or eleven, mm-hmm. right? And then me and you break up, and then mm-hmm. you still want to continue that relationship, but. I'm like, nah, get the fuck out of here. We ain't together no more. Mm-hmm. It's my kid. It's not your kid. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's fucked up of the person of the parent to do to the step parent? Not at all, because it's you. At the end of the day, it's still your kid, mm-hmm. and you have every right to disconnect them from whoever you want to disconnect them from. But it is your liability and your responsibility to support them. Because once you cut me off, I have nothing to say to that kid. That kid can can't reach out to me. It's it's going to be up to you to tell them what's going on, what happened. 
Mm -hmm. and you have to let him know oh we don't speak you know we're not reaching out to joy anymore like you know she's moving on i'm moving on that's your responsibility to teach no i'm saying what if you were still trying to keep that bond close and i was saying no i have to respect your wishes that's your kid but that's fucked up you I, that's it fucked is up? fucked up but that's something that i have to get i just have to uh deal with and move on with my life damn and that's the, i mean it's unfortunate but that's that's the reality of it like if i didn't want fun to be mm -hmm. my, sorry to say my baby name <gasps> time, stamp. time stamp but if i have to you know tell him to <laughs> it's so annoying but if i have to tell him don't speak to you anymore don't reach out to him. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you, if you see him anywhere, like walk the other way, I have to, <laughs> Damn, I have I to, do? but see, that's the thing. No, that's the thing. It's like, I will be responsible walk for, I would way. never say, I would never tell him just walk the other way. Like, hey, you fucking if pedophile. You see him, walk the other way. <laughs> walk the other walk way. The street and Turn away. Mm -hmm. No, but it's like, it's my responsibility to tell him and let him know the severity of it. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. what's actually happening and like, we're not going to, you know, me and him are not talking anymore. You just have, like I said, it's all about the support that you have mm -hmm. to give your child. And the the actual biological parent has primary, they have the biggest issue at hand. You know right. what I mean? But, hey, if you wanted to cut all ties with me and your baby, then th by all means, do what you need to do as a parent because I can only respect that. Yeah. And get the hell on. Oh, so you're saying you got one for that already? Because... Cause that sounded yes. real. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that sounded real. I direct. don't. I don't. I am unfortunately all in. But okay, okay, okay. I'm seventy seventy two point three percent in. I'm <laughs> sorry. I've been hurt before. I'm still working on. I'm just playing. I'm in. I'm all the way in. Mm -hmm. I'm all the way in mm -hmm. there. We in sure. there. We gonna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know you're not disrespecting what? my in this. You in? Is you disrespecting? You all the way in? Because just two weeks ago, not. you was like, mm, mm. What I had said. It was like, I don't know. It be bitches in Winco. I'll be looking at. Let's, it be bitches in Winco. Okay, well, it's not the topic, y'all, because I will beat his ass <laughs> on camera. Everybody knows. Comment down below. It be bitches in Winco. It be bitches in Walmart. Do you Super wanna? Center. Do you want to? No. Okay, that's all that matters. Anywho, that's all that matters. But that, they be in there though. If y'all was looking Lord for some mercy, bitches, why did I say this? <laughs> if y'all are looking for some bitches, go to Winco. Mm -hmm. They're there. Mm -hmm. Go to Walmart Super Center. Right? They're there. I don't know. I ain't out there looking for bitches. Me, me neither. You be looking. I'm telling niggas where they are because if you're in a relationship, you know where to this stay away from. This is the last person you want to look for, look up to when it comes. Never mind. I'm a dime. You I'm cool. print. I'm a, I'm a gem. You a cool little seven. I'm a gem. You a cool seven. You are a nice seven. You got that middle part. That just don't <laughs> sit. That just don't sit right with me. <laughs> I, I hate it. <laughs> I'm just playing. Let me get. It. No. Back the hell up. But Anywho, look. It is important for two people to talk about all these things before you start some shit. Agreed. Kids are so delicate. Mm -hmm. They need to be their mental health, their physical health. Very important. It all needs to be taken into account. Their emotional health, how they deal with things as an adult. Like, I don't think y'all understand, like, the baggage that kids these days are carrying around because of what their parents have have given to them. And the key thing is, it's not even their baggage. They're carrying around their parents' baggage. Right. And it's soiling their souls. Like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what? It's like you telling them, like, you know, don't even worry about this. Don't even worry about that. But they're constantly seeing it. They're constantly seeing disrespect or, you know, just, I don't know. They just be some, become so corrupted. They don't even know what to do with it. And they're just like, well, dad, you ain't let go of your baggage, so how I'm gonna let go of it? And it's like, like nigga, we, I'm holding your. I baggage. didn't give it to. Did you see me hand it to you? No, <laughs> <laughs> but no, they soak up everything. They will just, man, they carry it everywhere. I like, I like having the kids at the ages that I have them at now, because I have the teenagers. Mm -hmm. I got the toddlers right now. Mm -hmm. One toddler. One toddler. <laughs> I've got the teenager. I've got the preteen, and I've got the toddler. 
I've already went through the whole up to a teenage stage twice, mm-hmm. right? So I get to like take a step back and see how life affected my two teenagers, work towards fixing like, you know, mm. them getting older and, you know, making sure that life is as easy for them as possible when they get to be adults. Mm-hmm. And then seeing what I was able to fix, what I messed up on when I was trying to be a parent to them and be able to fix that with my younger kids. Right. Because, but then I'd be wondering too, like, are they going to resent me for doing yeah, things differently? Yeah, I was different? just going to say that, <laughs> yes. Because they can see it, They're, especially them being teenagers, they can see <clears throat> the difference in how you treat another kid or, you know what I'm saying, whatever mm-hmm. it is. And That's why I can't wait to have that conversation, even, no matter when it happens, but I want to have that conversation where your kids tell you, like, yo, this is what happened that you did that I didn't like, and I could explain to them. Like, I don't really think my kids are understanding at this moment because they're still, you know, looking to me for support and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that they understand it. Like I'm still fucking learning. I'm growing too. So, you know, but you also don't want them to be like in competition with each other. Right. Because then they're going to start to hate each other or be like, I'm better than you. You know what I mean? Like, you don't, that's the last thing you want because that shit will grow into their adulthood and they'll be like, right. But I think they're too far apart. I got it out the mud. Daddy did everything. You. (laughs) (laughs) What mud did you get it out from, Lucas? <laughs> it was Play-Doh. <laughs> it was, you lived in the suburbs, what? Lucas. <laughs> my kids. Have, oh, my no, God. They have some ghetto times for sure because they done lived in the hood. <laughs> Definitely. Not with me. I had them niggas in the suburbs. Mm-hmm. But you feel me? They've lived in the hood before. So, but I'm like, you know, the mud. My, no, the older them, the older ones didn't have to definitely. No, nah, all my kids didn't have to see some traumatic things some to me. Shit. Some janky shit mm-hmm. that I feel like you That's know. Okay, because you're doing better for them. Yeah, you got to man. You got to be able to try to you know roll with the punches. You roll with the punches. You do. But it's hard though when you think like you really try to protect kids from seeing and being involved in traumatic shit. <clears throat> Sometimes you are part of the reason why they see some traumatic shit. Mm-hmm. So it's they, like, look, your kids know some stuff about me. I wish they did not know. Well, I do be, I do look as, as a future step parent, I do be feeling some type of way because your kids be all up in grown folk business. They, they know do. a lot. They are very grown up for their ages. Yes, especially and the I, I mean, but that's again, <laughs> yes, that's just me as oh, the way. Which which age? Ten. The yeah, the 10 and 14 year old be having me like mind blown. But, you know, so for me, I'm not used to it. Again, we're going back to blended families and, you know, my my parenting, way different. There's certain things my son would never say around me, but his kids say it all the time. And I just be like, I'm looking at him like, you going to say something? He don't say something. So I, I, I feel like I can't something. say something. You know what I mean? But my thing is, the only thing I can say <laughs> is when you're, when I, what I can tell them is when you're around me, don't use that language or don't talk in that manner. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I don't, I don't like the way that sounds. Mm-hmm. I don't. I feel like you're too young to even talk like that. What's an example those? of a word? Because maybe they don't say that shit around me. Whatever you think they say. No, they do. What's That's. It? I mean, just certain things. Like I don't. It's. It's kind of like. They do say some pretty. Okay. So <laughs> okay. So things. let's just let's for instance use the term gay. Oh, yeah. They, you know what I'm saying? They use it so freely. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they understand that the, the, like the severity of that word, especially in 2022, how harsh it can affect somebody. Yes. Um, And I get they joke a lot and stuff like that, but somebody can commit suicide off of some crazy shit like that. You know what I mean? And that's the last thing you want your kid to be blamed for is bullying somebody and, you know, them just simply calling them gay. Because it's That's so true. hurtful. You know what I mean? And it's like kids, kids, kids want to be gay freely up. nowadays. And it's like, yeah. well, by all mm-hmm. means, you know, be yourself. But right. when you make it a harsh thing, when you make it so such a negative thing, like I'm calling you out your name, it, it becomes a whole different situation. So do I like for your kids to use that term? No, I do not. No. Yeah. I don't. Because guess what? If something were to go down, guess who the other parents are going to come for? They Is you ready to me? fight, nigga? <laughs> Put them up, put them up, <laughs> put them the fuck up. Oh my God. I'm going to ride but for mine. That's the Baby, whole ordeal. I'm going to chastise him in the car. He's going to cry in the car, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> 
But no, no, I get no it, one that, ever wants to have to deal with that party, that, that birthday party that we was at. <laughs> Let me tell y'all the story. <laughs> God. So <laughs> we went <laughs> at that moment, my family did not accept <laughs> this relationship. <laughs> we went to a birthday party, mm-hmm. and my ten year old came with me to a birthday party. <laughs> He came with me to the birthday party, and they was in the pool swimming. They was all having fun. And mind you, this is a mixed crowd. It's a couple of... Very diverse. It's, it's a very diverse crowd. It's a couple of African-Americans yeah, there. Family, it's friends. a couple it's, of Filipino people there. It's a couple of Hispanics. Mm-hmm. Some, you know, it was a whole blend of people. So it was multicultural. Yeah. So it was kids in the pool. They was all in the pool playing. And... When they, when they was in the pool playing, <laughs> when they was in the pool playing, my 10 year old, what was he saying? What did he say? He was like, he, I don't know what kind of game they were playing, but all I heard was, I said, if you touch me, you're gay. Oh, yeah. He was like, if you touch me, you're gay. And, and when he the already kids talked him, loud. He talked so So loud. he's literally yelling. He probably got water in his ear, like yelling at the top of his lungs, like, mm-hmm. if you, I said, if you touch me, you're gay. And oh, my God. And, and my brother the didn't turn around him. and look. One of the kids, one of the kids, kids touched like, him. Like, you touch me, you're, you're gay. gay. I was like. <laughs> it seemed like the music in the party had stopped. Everything went silent. He was the only person Everyone heard at that moment. turned around and was just I, My brother must have turned around and looked at me like. Oh my God. And it's like, as much as he wanted to laugh, like we're just not used to, like we were just like, we were raised to not speak in negative ways. So Mm -hmm. if you know, you treat others how you want to be treated. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. And you know, it's always been like a term to where it can negatively, you negatively uh, impact somebody, you know, offend them. So for him, he's looking at me like, oh my God, like Joy, what the hell? Like, how old is he saying this? And it's like, oh well, shit, it ain't my it ain't my kid. You know what I'm saying? We were still fresh into our relationship. So I'm just like, I can't do it. I can't he's like so loud. He's so loud. But like I had to like I looked at you and I was like, yo, like get, and I was like, like, get hey, the shit under hey. control. Because <laughs> like I said, there was people there at the party that could have been gay. And it's I didn't true. know. You know what I mean? And they could have really been offended by that, and we don't know. So we would have had to jump my son. Yeah. Because I don't play that. I don't play that discrimination shit. Basically. Because then it's like, they're going to be looking at us like, are you going to talk to the kid? Da, 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 da. And it's like, it's just for some people, it can be a sign of disrespect. And yeah. that's, again, one thing that I just don't appreciate. I don't like the term. I mean, there are certain things you don't let them say. And there are certain things that I don't want to hear. You know, I don't want to be, I don't know. That's just me. But You don't want to be implicated. I don't. Your Honor, she had nothing to do with this. But I feel like I'm at a point where I can tell them at least, you know, hey, chill the hell out with that. Don't talk like that. You know, that to- that brings us to our next topic. Mm-hmm. Step parent boundaries. Mm-hmm. Expound. I ain't, whoop- I ain't whooping them. Because I'm going to whoop your kid. No, you're not. <laughs> you ain't going to touch me. You ain't going to touch Because I'm going to tell mama. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fire your kid up and be like, No, hey, you are not. Hey, little nigga. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Ugh, with your face like that, <laughs> he'll never take you serious. <laughs> that's the, that's what I do to like. That's what I do to, to intimidate. To intimidate. That's not working. <laughs> Ew, <you're> ugly. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't. You don't think that'll Man, work? No, that not shit on work. my baby. My baby's gonna laugh at you. That work on my. My baby's gonna laugh at you. He gonna laugh. Yes. Damn, that's like, all I got. Uh, I don't got nothing else besides that. He gonna be like, you want to really talk? <laughs> Right. Be serious? No. I honestly do not whoop kids, bro. I don't believe yeah, in whooping kids. I got whooped as a kid, and it didn't do nothing. It didn't do shit. All it did was teach me how to get away with shit. Yeah, I like I said before, I do believe in discipline, and I do believe as me and you coming together as one. I do. I mean, we really haven't had a talk just yet about it, but I do feel like you know us coming together, we have to find some common ground when it comes to. Discipline. disciplinary actions mm-hmm. um and we just have to be on one accord with it and we have to set that structure so that they know oh i'm gonna get in trouble regardless of my mama uh, you know if joy at home or my daddy at home mm-hmm. whatever it is you what know you, what i mean what would you think of a d- so say for instance action. taking away a phone <gasps> so i don't if think I that were, shit work no more i don't think my kids we're just, okay we're just using that as an example though All right. so um if, if they know their punishment is you cannot have your phone when you get home, they have it at school, you know, for emergency purposes. Mm-hmm. But when you get home, the phone goes away. So if I'm the only one at home, I pick them up from school. They know that when they get in the car, they need to hand me the phone. That's, that will be the protocol. 
I don't think them little niggas care about their phone getting took no more. That's fine, but that's <clears> just an example <throat> of right. how we would have that common, you know, agreement and stand on one accord. Exactly. Knowing and I feel like that's very important. It's very important. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Like electronics. If I mean, it, it can go for any electronic. The playstations, the, the tablets, the the switches, whatever it is, you're not getting on that. Even if it's oh, after eight o'clock, the the phone goes away. The p mm-hmm. get off that PS5, whatever. So, after eight. Yeah, whatever it needs to be. You. I don't want to live with you. I'm I'm not just hypothetically speaking. I'm gonna turn the PlayStation off at the eight too. I am hypothetically you gonna speaking. You gonna make me turn the PlayStation off? Yes. I'm trying to get the high score on GTA Five. I don't care. I don't care. That's fucked up. I don't care. I do, but I, I, it is important for there to be step parent boundaries. But I also think it's very important for the biological parent to give access to the step parent to be a disciplinary too. Yes. Not based, not abusing the kid, not, you know, doing crazy shit, but that parent should, the step parent should be able to, you know, discipline the other kid within mm-hmm. reason. Like, especially like when it's two different, when it's a blended family and the person has, let's say I have my own biological kids and then you have your biological kid. It wouldn't be fair for me to discipline your kid a certain type of way and then discipline discipline my kids separately. Yeah, so I it do, all has to be the same. It has to be on one accord. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that the biological parent should be like the safe haven for the step kid. Like it don't really matter what you say because my mama going to look out for me or yeah, vice versa. My you never want, no, you don't want that to happen. I don't and you don't want to, you also don't want to be that parent that's always having to be like, oh, well, such and such did this. Can I do this or should I do? You don't want to have to always go to, like as a, use you as a lifeline, like, oh, should mm-hmm. I discipline like this or you know, and it, I want to say being a parent already, and I'm not knocking anybody who doesn't already have kids, but being a parent already gives you a a slight edge on it because you know what parenting takes. You know what I mean? Even if your kid is a toddler, like, you know what it takes to find that structure. So Mm, uh, if there's anybody out there who can tell me how to parent my toddler. Oh, my God. It's I a do. toddler. But without whooping a toddler, do you know how hard that is to parent a toddler? Toddlers don't give a fuck. I, they don't give a fuck. Look, me and your toddler have a very good understanding now. He's scared of you. <laughs> your Honor, I'm like scared. I said, we have a very good <laughs> I don't know what the fuck yeah. she did. That nigga is scared. <laughs> he do not fuck with you. You said you said back to the car earlier oh sorry timestamp. you sent him back to the car earlier <laughs> talking about um i guess if the baby was crying to bring him outside or something like that he wasn't in there crying no that wasn't because you was doing something to him oh That's no i thought you I thought you just wanted to get him out the car if he was crying like annoying me or something oh no no, like, no no, no. that fine. was no that was because me and Timestamp. Time <laughs> <laughs> That's because me and my 10 year old mm-hmm. were already outside of the car mm-hmm. and he knows we got the school and that his brother's playing, you know, mm-hmm. soccer or whatever. So he might want to get out and he might be crying. Like, I don't want to get out. Mm-hmm. Of the car. So I was saying if he in there tripping, take him out the car so he can run around and get his yeah. playoffs, you know? Well, no, it was nothing like that. Me and him, he's actually much more comfortable around me now. I mean, kind of annoying no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> i think it's cute because our i feel like the bonding of everybody's relationship just kind of came naturally not it, nothing was forced these? i never forced these kids to talk to me she or did. your honor she did i didn't she your 14 year old be coming to me talking to me and i'll I be seen, like okay i seen the ear pool ain't no damn Get ear pool ain't no ear pool you know that church the church pinch i seen you do the church pinch i didn't your honor i didn't do anything shut the shit up Shut the shit up. <laughs> no, but you know what's so funny though? You and the Tyler, it's like y'all niggas got a double Dutch relationship going on and nobody knows when to jump in. Why? Because y'all just like, hey, what you doing? You want me to jump in now? How about now? No, not yet. I don't think oh, you're, like you're going too fast. You're going too fast. You're going too What you doing? Why are you swinging? The- <laughs> That's what y'all be doing. <laughs> It's I, so awkward and hilarious. It's funny as fuck. For good reason, though. Like, I understand why. It's a lot going on. <laughs> it's a lot going on. I think for me, it's kind of like coming into a relationship and having the other person have a toddler that does not belong to you is very shocking. Mm-hmm. It's very, it's a different situation because I, I'm past the toddler stage. 
by a few years, you it's know ghetto. what I mean? So it is very ghetto. ghetto. But then I also compare, you know, my kid to, you know, his, and I'm just like, my kid was nothing like this. And I'm like, well, okay, you know, I just have to deal with it and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But at the same time, I have the knowledge of a parent to where not all parents are smart. <clears throat> but I have the knowledge of a parent, you know, Preach on. to be able to say certain things for him to understand or, you know, for us to just have that bond and not be so awkward or, you know, I want to, because you have to realize the first few years in a child's life is very critical when it comes to trust, trust right. and mistrust. Right? right. So for me, obviously becoming a bonus parent, I need him to trust me mm -hmm. from when I'm picking him up from school or whatever the case may be. If he has a, a boo-boo on his finger, I, I want him to feel safe enough to come to me and ask me for a band aid. Little you things like that. Little little <laughs> things like that though. It's like really important. You know what I mean? So it's like forget the tantrums, forget the the, the crying for no reason. Like I still have to figure out the the blending of me and, you know, the baby. So Because he's gonna cry for no reason. He is. And I just, you know, <laughs> I can block it out. I'm hey, he's gonna do what he wanna do and you're 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 pretty good at handling it or I'm, ignoring it. <laughs> look. She hates the way I do it because I just fucking ignore him. Yeah. It don't bother me. He can cry. He can scream. And I just be like going on about my day. Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh, my God, say something to this little nigga. Say something. Yeah. Do something. I was yeah. Like, it was very annoying at kids. first. It was very <laughs> annoying at first. And I can admit that. And I'm just like, <clears throat> I don't want to deal with it. I'm tired. Like I'm studying or whatever it is. But I have adapted way more now than i did what even three months ago <laughs> it's but it's like once once toddlers start knowing that that irritates you they just keep doing it yeah because you're gonna fold yeah but if you don't fold then they don't have no power in it mm -hmm. and it's like you always say you can't give them that much attention because they're just gonna keep going and going and going and it's not going to stop so right. my thing i mean i can ask i can ask the baby to do something and he'll do it i'll tell you what it is gonna do Go ahead, do all that crying if you want to. Guess what you're going to do? Take a nap because you done tired your goddamn self getting out. Getting that bath. <laughs> Go brush some teeth. Go brush the teeth, do something. You're going to take because you're going to fall asleep. Go finish that waffle. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is. Do something. Yes. Cause Cause, oh, my God. It's hard having a toddler. For me, at this age, not at this age, it's hard having a toddler in the 30s. That's ghetto as fuck. I just want to let that be known. Because mm -hmm. I had all the grown kids. Like, my kids was on autopilot. Then I had the toddler. And it's it's kind of harder for me to parent a toddler now because I'm leaning more towards the gentle parenting. You know, like I don't believe in whooping kids. Mm -hmm. I don't yell at my kids or do aggressive shit towards them, cussing at them and shit like mm -hmm. that. I don't do shit like that. So it's hard to get a top for the older kids. I feel like I could just, you know, I've I grew up I still like whooped them when they was kids so I have mm -hmm. like I guess a natural fear I don't know of like I don't want to get my ass whooped I can still count to three and my sixteen year old is gonna be like he gonna make sure he get there by three mm -hmm. <laughs> you feel me even though I ain't gonna do shit yeah but like the toddler I can count to three that nigga gonna be like four five six right. all the way to a fucking hundred he don't give a fuck so it's kind of hard to like instill that dominance without like instilling fear mm -hmm. you know because i don't want to be like nigga i'm be, don't be scared of me respect me and be scared yeah. of me because that's not what i'm trying to do i want you to be like this is my dad i respect my dad i'm gonna follow the directions he has my best interest and that's what i'm trying to do with the toddler but <sighs> he's a gang member yeah and he, he doesn't and <laughs> he doesn't give a fuck yes <laughs> So there's Nerf guns under his bed. It's Nerf guns <laughs> under his bed with real bullets. <laughs> with bullets. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out how to get that. It's ghetto. I don't know how to how to stop it. I'm afraid for him to like go to school because he has a little bit of a temper, and he's a crybaby at the same little. time. It's weird. Little. <laughs> you think he has a big temper? <laughs> uh, he don't have a choice. He have three older brothers. And he's only three. He got a 16-year-old brother, a 14-year-old brother, and a 10-year-old brother. Mm -hmm. You got to fight to survive. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody going easy on you around here. They not going to let you have your way all the time. Well, look, <clears throat> I will not be picking him up from school for bad behavior. 
Get a grip. But you get it under control. <laughs> shut the shit up. <laughs> shut the shit up. Because if they call me, baby, I'm gonna be put his ass in the corner. What about the uh, tell him to count his ABCs backwards? <laughs> you can't use education as negative reinforcement. You're right, <laughs> but still, it's something use, to do. Shit, I use, probably am. You can't use education as punishment. That's negative That's reinforcement. Not, I said backwards. It's comp. It's more complex. You know what I'm saying? It's more. He got to really think. I don't know. You think? I think always, about what you did. I always wondered this. What if you use something that kids liked as punishment? They would not like it no more, right? No. You don't think so? Mm-mm. Because if my mama was w- trying to punish me and she was like, Joy, get out there and run track. <laughs> you sure? Because <laughs> I'll, I'll wear these 600s out right now. <laughs> not if you had to be out there all night? Well, I'm calling police. That's a Because <laughs> my leg's tired. That's what I'm saying. You would never want to run track again. <laughs> no, I would. Still? I would be confused as to why you're punishing me with something I like. That's more the thing. I'm like confused as to why do you want me to do something that I like? I don't That's know. crazy. I'll be wondering, like, if if you use things like, what if you was like, if you made your kids stay on the phone all fucking day until uh, it was like. I have a different me. aspect of that. Like, your 14 year old loves to paint, right? Mm-hmm. If you punished him by painting, he might not like practice. Paint no makes more. perfect though, so he might actually like make about ten, ten different. You know what I'm saying? That man is like Van Gogh. Exactly. I don't know. And he gonna go. Okay. He gonna go. I damn near want to, you know, I'm just trying to make sure these niggas are successful because I don't want to work my whole life. I need somebody to hit that lottery. It need to be me. Yeah. You gonna know because you already said you gonna, you gonna bounce if you get some money. I did not. You had said that. No. You ain't said it, but you said it. I just said I was gonna live separately. <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just kidding. I don't know how long this episode is. I think we're on like six hours right now. Oh God. We're not. We're no. not. But that, I don't know. Is there anything else we needed to talk about? Yeah, man. We what? uh well, we didn't really didn't get into boundaries though. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I Oh no, we we, we did. I got but, a, I got some. I got some. So uh what's up with them niggas in your motherfucking DMs? Hmm? Hmm? I sent you like six niggas pictures on Instagram. What's up with that? Who is he talking to? I said, right what's now? up with that? I seen you put I seen you put the eye emoji under the nigga picture. What's Time up with stamps. that? C- correction, because I don't even know what the hell what's he's talking about that? right now. No, don't try to time stamp now. You sure it was time stamping on the niggas Instagram pictures. What's up with that? She ain't got nothing to say, Your Honor. He ain't seen nothing, so I'm confused as what he's talking about. Uh, I thought you was going to fold. No. <laughs> the fuck? I'm going to fold what? <laughs> I thought she was going to fold. Her what? Uh, because. Maybe you would have been like, I don't know. I don't know, babe. I just had a weak moment. I like some niggas pictures today. Swear for. <laughs> like, like uh, what? <laughs> I loved. <laughs> I'm just playing. I liked a few pictures. I don't like that. I don't care. You I liked the few pictures. I didn't like no pictures today. Okay. Yesterday. Yeah. See. <laughs> do you really want to have this fight? Yes, I do. I'll die on this hill. I will what die you, on this what's hill. What's on your mind? Well, honestly, a real nigga would have said you, but go off. Oh, I'm a fake nigga all day. Mm-hmm. I would never. <laughs> I would never aspire to be something I'm not. Mm-hmm. But anyways. Oh, see, them niggas on Instagram then told you what niggas are supposed to say during the Nah, don't put your crusty ass feet on me. Y'all, we made a bet yesterday. He has to kiss my feet. No, 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 no. I'm not they doing kiss that. My feet. No. Do y'all okay. see these? I'm gonna zoom in on these. <laughs> I can't even took them my toes. She, I think something's wrong with my nervous system. <laughs> I think something's wrong with your toes. Ugh, they look gross. You said you used to run track? <laughs> yes. Barefoot? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Uh, you was running through Times Square with them feet. That's so <laughs> <laughs> We ain't gonna talk about toes because I will put that oh, picture I'm never on the internet. Them out. I'm never pulling I them out. will put that picture on the internet. Where you get that from? Let me just holler at you. Let no. Me <laughs> no, 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 no. Nope. There's no going back. Well, we got enough. We our picture game, the embarrassing pictures that we got of each other, it's kind of like we like America and Russia. Like, we both got nuclear weapons, mm-hmm. but we know it ain't going to do no good for the world if we let them off. We'll destroy everything. Mm-hmm. So we just be like, nigga, I got this. Mm. 
Yeah, leave it at that. Because no, I got some fucked up shit. If I let too. that off, baby, if I post that on Facebook, you gonna at least get fired up for like two weeks. You gonna get fired up too? Because why would you? No, they I'm gonna not. be like, "Ugh, that's the, them feet that you be feeting with under the cover." My feet's not ugly. But my feet touch your feet. Your feet is kind of ugly. Your feet. <laughs> <laughs> he really looking at my feet, y'all. That's your the funny part. Your feet look like the little brown, my, the little brown things that Mario jump on. You know what I'm talking no. about? <laughs> yes, he do. <laughs> he got the same face and everything on the first Mario. From the <laughs> Don't touch me with that. Don't touch me with that. So... <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna have to end this episode because I got fatherly things to do. Mm-hmm. I gotta go to sleep. I gotta abandon my kids, so <laughs> I gotta go to sleep. I got fatherly things to do, like go to the store to get milk oh. for years. Okay. So, mm-hmm. thank y'all for tuning in to. Oh no! Before we before we do that, just we gonna make sure that we retouch on some things before we head up out of here. Mm-hmm. Baby mamas, baby daddies, make sure. That the way that you are acting towards each other is for the best interest of your kid. Put your pride to the side. Put your kids first. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, they're the most important. Yes. And that doesn't mean that you can do fucked up shit and expect the other parent mm-hmm. to just put it to the side because it's for the greater good of the kid. Because it still takes a balance. Yes. So, get out your feelings. Mm-hmm. Put your kids first. Mm-hmm. Put your pride to the side. Communicate. Mm-hmm. The parents, because children are the, the future. The blended, the blending parents the blending. communicate. Yes, Meet those. I mean, communicate those boundaries. Yes, because children are the future. Figure out proper parenting styles that will work for your household. Stop ruining your kids. Yes. Stop ruining your kids. Yes. Okay. And continue to thrive. Continue to be great. Continue to have high hopes for yourself and your kids, and you know, have those positive impacts on them. Because it makes a difference. It does. If you got baggage when you were from your childhood, just imagine that your kids will have that same same impact on them. Mm-hmm. You know, it might be a different thing, but the same way that you feel traumatic experiences from your childhood, the same way you might resent a parent or the same reason why you are at odds with a parent or something like that, mm-hmm. your kid will be dealing with the same thing. So be mindful of that. Go out there. Be great. Like, comment, subscribe, share. This has been another episode of what's the name of this podcast, baby? How did I get stuck with you? You feel me? Thank y'all. Bye. It's hoes at Winco and uh, Super Walmart.